we're kind of always given this cookie cutter image of who's supposed to be in the outdoors. That's what representation does, right? It shows us that we aren't the first and there's a community of people um, past and present that are encouraging us and supporting us in, in that new activity. Welcome neighbors to Hometown Earth, the podcast that brings a down to earth approach to all of your sustainability questions. I'm your host, Lena Sanford, here on the Believe Podcast Network, the number one podcast network for professionals. Here, we believe that everyone can change the world. Do you believe? I'm a Midwest gal with big dreams to discover what it takes to reduce my impact on this beautiful place we call Hometown Earth. Join me every Tuesday as we navigate what actions we can take, big or small, to make a positive impact in your life and the lives of your neighbors on Hometown Earth. Hello, neighbors. Have you ever gone on an outdoor adventure and felt truly uninhibited, finding the space to express yourself without restraint, allowing you to deepen your connection to yourself, others, and nature? If you do a quick Google search of the Venture Out Project, you're going to find tons of images of beautiful, smiling humans on outdoor adventures doing just that. The Venture Out Project is an organization that leads backpacking and wilderness trips for the queer and transgender community, creating space that is not only safe, but fun, educational, and uplifting. They also conduct transgender inclusion workshops for educators, adventure professionals, summer camps, and more. The Venture Out Project is truly unique, drawing people with shared experiences who love the outdoors together to build an inclusive and caring community. Today, you get the joy of meeting Anna Seiler, Marketing and Partnerships Coordinator at the Venture Out Project. Anna is a breath of fresh air and encompasses the spirit of the outdoors. Although she currently calls the valley and hill towns of Western Massachusetts home, Anna is originally from Maine and discovered her love for getting lost in the forested areas around New England in college. After graduating, Anna explored her passion for native pollinators, regenerative homesteading, and farm-to-table food equity through WOLF, which stands for Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms, and through other various seasonal gigs. If you were looking, you might find her in a garden with her hands in the dirt or attempting to keep up with her puppy, Duncan, on a trail somewhere. Her heart is with the land and the people who steward it, fostering connections that bridge the gaps of access and education in gender-diverse outdoor spaces. In this episode, we learn more about how the Venture Out Project empowers its venturers to find themselves at home in nature while developing leadership skills and building relationships along the way. Ready to hear more? Let's venture out. Anna, thank you so much for joining us here on Hometown Earth. Um, we know a little bit about your love for getting lost and exploring, but if you could just tell us a little bit more about how you got involved with the Venture Out Project specifically. For sure. I, you know, I grew up in um, Southern Maine. So ironically, I never really, f I never really connected as like an outdoorsy kind of person. Um, <laughs> I read a lot of books like Hatchet and Lost on a Mountain in Maine, which kind of gave me this feeling about outdoor spaces is like dangerous or scary mm. or like overtly masculine in that way. And so as a young woman and later as a young queer woman, I never really felt welcomed into those spaces. And now looking back on it, I think it was kind of a lack in representation that led me to feel that way. And things might've been different had that been different, but, um, you know, going through college, um, in my last year as a senior, as an, in, in my undergrad, I kind of like revolted from that yeah. <laughs> and decided like, I'm going to be in outdoor spaces <laughs> regardless of if I'm ready to be. Yeah. And so I went on a number of hikes that, um, you know, several miles in tennis shoes with not enough water and definitely not enough <laughs> snacks. <laughs> a learning experience. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. A little bit reckless on my end, but, um, I think I felt all those years of, of, 
being denied internally these outdoor spaces. Um, I had my partner had been on a T-Bop hike in the past, so I was familiar with the T-Bop name and kind of the fact that they led queer and trans day hikes and overnight events, but I didn't know anything other than that. I didn't know where they were located. And after I graduated, I moved out to Western Massachusetts into the hill towns to pursue some agriculture work. Um, I happened to be like 20 minutes from the TVOP offices. Nice. Uh, and yeah, it was kind of serendipity. But um, as a new queer person in a new area, almost a year into a pandemic, I was super, super desperate for community. Um, and I signed up for one of their outdoor hikes, their day hikes around Mount Tom which was ironically the same time that they had posted um, a position open for a communication specialist. So yeah. I jumped on both opportunities to take a hike <laughs> with them and join their team. And um, I feel like I came across them by pure magic and it has felt like that ever since. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love that. Well, so, you know, one of the things that we talk about a lot on this podcast is how connecting with nature is, is so important because it allows us to stay healthy and, really like committed and connected to uh, protecting the earth. So, you know, how that's not accessible for all people, kind of what you led to. Um, if you could talk a little bit more about the accessibility factor um, for, you know, queer, trans and LGBTQ plus, you know, youth and adults in the outdoor and nature spaces. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that that really gets to the heart of what TVOP is about, right? It's about narrowing that those boundaries, those barriers that are keeping queer and trans youth and adults from exploring outdoor spaces. I think um, one thing that I can think of, I have a couple in my head that I can talk about. The first one is like representation in general. Um, we're kind of always given this cookie cutter image of who's supposed to be in the outdoors. Yep. Um, and I think that that really serves as some major limitations uh, for queer and trans people when they don't see themselves represented outside, right? Like right. you never, you, it doesn't, unless you're like a super adventurer, it doesn't always feel good to be the first person to do something um, that you've never done before, right? right. So you wouldn't want to be the first LGBTQ person to lace on some hiking boots and get out to explore some trails. Um, and that's what representation does, right? It shows us that um, we aren't the first and there's a community of people, um, past and present that are encouraging us and supporting us in, in that new activity. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The other things that I can think of that are a little bit more tangible, you know, there's financial accessibility. It can cost hundreds of dollars mm -hmm. to outfit yourself, um, in a comfortable way for backpack, like a weekend of overnight backpacking. Yeah. Um, and financial accessibility, of course, that, that can impact anybody across any identity. Um, but for queer and trans people specifically, you know, that's a super intersectional identity. There are BIPOC queer and trans people. There are disabled queer and trans people. Um, and all of these other identities um, face some sort of marginalization financially. So finan finances are a huge barrier. Um, and then I think there's also, you know, other things like learning how to manage, there's like a learning curve of learning how to manage hormones or medications when you're on the trail, um, or finding gender affirming clothing that fits and is also appropriate for outdoor recreation. Th yeah. Those are all some challenges that I can think of that, that we, um, actively work to kind of dismantle at TVOP. Yeah. So kind of what I'm hearing is it a little bit, you know, the representation side of things, but it also does like switch the narrative of like who should be in the outdoors and kind right. of retells that story. So I, I really love that and that y'all are doing that. Can we maybe talk a little bit about, you know, representation also not only in, you know, like organizational spaces, like having, I think you kind of touched on it a little bit is like the idea of what an outdoorsman or, you know, person is, is like that white cis man. <laughs> so, you know, how does this, does this contribute also to representation in, you know, other organizations like national park organizations, or even people seeing, you know, the diversity that is in nature and connecting mm -hmm. with that aspect of things? Yeah. Oh God. I love that question. It's so true. I mean, we, a lot of our partnerships are like non-queer or non-trans organizations looking to um, increase diversity in their conservation area yeah. or in their affinity group um, in some way. So I think there's definitely that desire in people um, in like human based uh, scenarios, as far as like non-human scenarios goes, 
I like horticulture uh, is kind of my thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's kind of like my specialty at TVOP. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, which is kind of new for us. Um, but I will say that, you know, nature in itself is kind of genderless. I mean, it is yeah, genderless. Um, when you're in the backcountry, when you're in these natural settings, um, you're not presented with the same stereotypes or um, expectations that people place on gender performances that you are in the front country. Yeah. Um, like one of my favorite facts from horticulture is the fact that um, – plants that have male and female reproductive parts like male and female flowers on the same plant they're considered a perfect plant oh. right and so we wouldn't our, our dominant culture in the united states wouldn't necessarily say the same about a human with right. both both parts of anatomy um and I, I, I love that that TVOP is a place that people can go to really explore outdoors and let go, like drop off those the masks that we wear that allow us to kind of fit into society. Yeah, absolutely. That, you know, we're all going to be sweaty. We're all going to be a little bit dirty and we're all going to be fully alive because we're we're able to let go of those things. Oh, that just makes me all warm and fuzzy. And <laughs> I really love that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, like y'all are here, like creating these spaces that are safe and equitable, which really mm -hmm. is kind of a social justice issue. So can we talk a little bit more about how that intersects with climate justice? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, oh, gosh, I can think of so many ways. Um, I think in particular, when we think about like environmental stewardship, right, we're talking about taking ownership um, of the land that we're recreating on, on the land that, that is keeping us alive, basically. Yeah. Um, and I think about that quote, have you ever heard that quote, like, not my monkeys, not my circus? I have never heard that, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's a New England thing. I love it. Um, <laughs> but, you know, that, that kind of means like, if it's, if it's not my problem, I'm not going to deal uh, with it. Yeah, yeah. Um, and when, when people aren't connected with the land, when they are, when they're just treating the earth as something that is serving them rather than them serving it, right. um, it, it disentangles, it disconnects them from the fact that we're all in this one big reciprocal relationship with each other and with the land and with the creatures that live on it. Um, and so what TVOP does, we get queer and trans people into outdoor spaces. We're building this community. We're strengthening bonds with each other. We're showing positive representation. But what we're also doing is we're, we're allowing them to get comfortable with these outdoor spaces. We're allowing those connections to rebuild um, that have been broken down by that white, straight, yes. cis, able-bodied male representation that we've always been given. Um, and so we're kind of we're, we're disconnecting that thought of not my monkeys, not my circus and allowing people to take ownership over this place that is bringing them so much joy and so much freedom. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, that lends itself eventually to, to land stewardship and environmental stewardship and people feeling responsible for the places that they um, enjoy the most. Yeah. I think part of it, you know, is, like, like you mentioned, society is tells us to be individualistic and kind of mm -hmm. like materialistic almost, but these spaces that y'all are creating allows people to connect and collaborate and communicate with each other and realize how everything kind of works together. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that that's what makes this space so important and also creates leaders within the space because y'all are able to essentially come up with new ideas to help solve these problems. Is that something that y'all talk about when you're on these uh, outdoor adventures or? Yeah. Oh my God. Yes. These questions are so good. Thank you for <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, it's actually something that we're, we're looking to implement more and more, the more that yeah. we're on the trail, you know, that um, the outdoors is our office and it's our playground and it's the land that we love the most. And yeah. so I think that it's, it's kind of our duty as, as outdoor leaders, as outdoor recreation leaders to um, facilitate these conversations with people that like, maybe they've been backpacking their whole life. Maybe this is their first time setting up a tent, you know? Yeah. Um, and it, that can be really, really empowering. So we, you know, around, around dinner, we'll talk about, um, the, the use of plastic that we're having to use in order to, to outfit our trips for um, meals because of COVID we kind of had, we used to, yeah. we used to cook all of our meals in one big pot um, and then divvy it up. But because of COVID we've had to kind of reinvent some of the ways that we're cooking and preparing food. Um, and so, 
you know, there's a certain amount of there's a certain amount of plastic um, and things like that that have to be used in backpacking for weight reasons, mm. the amount that you're carrying. Um, so we try really hard to make that a part of the conversation when we can't eliminate it. Right. Um, yeah. So so yeah, that looks like just chatting about it. Honestly, yeah. we have a lot. We host a lot of conversation um, and are very open to chatting about whatever our participants feel like needs to be addressed. There is an education piece to to what y'all are doing there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, sometimes sometimes we get queer people on trips, queer and trans people who just kind of like want to to do the stuff. Like they just want to go out and they want to meet queer and trans people and they just want to go camping. But then there are some people that come out who are like, I want to pursue this passion on my own. Can you teach me about outdoor hygiene? Can you Mm -hmm. teach me how to build a fire? Can you teach me how to um, throw a bear bag? Um, And so education naturally becomes a huge part of what our instructors are doing when they're out there on the trails. Um, And we like to let our participants kind of decide what they want to do. Um, No T-Bop trip is like, we go out, we teach them how to string a bear bag. We go to bed <laughs> yeah. the next day. Yeah. Um, we, uh, we allow things to kind of take form um, as our participants want, but most frequently that is some form of education along the way. Um, and I think that's why we get a number of people um, wanting to come back with us on trips because they're, they're feeling empowered and they know that there's still so much to learn. Right. Um, and our instructors are incredibly knowledgeable at passing on that information. So we're very privileged to have the instructors that we do, but there's a yeah. ton of education that goes into our work. Well, so, you know, how this, the trips that y'all create, um, are, are for specifically the queer and trans communities. So Mm -hmm. how can people be an ally, whether they're on trips that are, you know, hosted by TVOP or, um, even if they see something in the outdoors, how can, how can people be an ally? I think, you know, a lot of people for this question might jump to like the pronouns bit about like, it's really important that we're, that we're learning pronouns, that we're practicing them when we're driving alone in the car, that we're comfortable using pronouns other than he and she. Um, and that is a huge part of it. I mean, we, we have a whole trans one-on-one inclusion workshop that we lead, um, for organizations and businesses and such that talks about pronouns and the importance of that. Um, but I think we're at a point now where we're, we're also trying to encourage people to examine their relationships with gender um, and deconstruct that a little bit um, because those are the things like gender language that we take into outdoor spaces um, that kind of dictates whether a queer person and a trans person feels welcome into those yeah. spaces. You know, so for example, one of the things that we've we've implemented at TVOP, of course, because of the work that we do, um, is kind of disassembling the way that we talk about hygiene, right? When we're on the trail and we're teaching people about, you know, um, proper leave no trace, bathroom etiquette, personal hygiene things, um, rather than saying something like, when women go to the bathroom, we'd say for people who squat to pee. So we're removing the gender language out of that because to be honest, Anybody, anybody can squat to pee. And if they resonate with that, what's important is that they're getting their personal hygiene needs met. Um, and so so things like that, I mean, that, that kind of gender language is backcountry and front country, um, etiquette that can be worked on by people. And I think that that would, um, really open some people up to understanding both why it's so important that queer and trans people are able to get outside and access the outdoors. Um, but it would also assist in queer and trans people feeling welcomed. So kind of my, my next thought there is I feel like there's so much more to, to to devop than what they might see even on the website. So Mm -hmm. is there anything that you, that comes to mind whenever I, I say that, like, is there any hidden, like, you know, thing that you really wish people knew about the Venture Out project that maybe you even, maybe you can share a story that, you know, (laughs) one of your favorite trips and maybe something that you've gotten out of it. Yeah, absolutely. I, oh God. Well, I feel like you know, <laughs> growing up in Maine, I didn't get a ton of queer and trans representation. Mm. And I think that it's kind of a given that you're going to get some queer and trans representation if you come on a TVOP trip, yeah. <laughs> because that's what we do. And that's what our um, audience is made up of. Mm-hmm. Um, but it kind of still surprises me. And I think it's because I, I didn't grow up with a ton of representation. Um, I we recently this past August, we led a, a, a road trip through the Midwest Um where we were like leading day hikes and we had a, an overnight camp out um, where queer and trans people could come from wherever um, and come on a hike with us and just nice. 
meet us and get involved with us and to know that we exist and that we'd love to have them on a trip someday. And I just found myself like every hike that I went on surprised that there were queer and trans people showing up. Really? Um, Yeah. Yeah. I uh, like, and that's kind of a response that I've had since I started working at TVOP. I mean, I feel like I've met more LGBTQ people in the last year than I had in my entire life combined. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And I think that that, I think that the community that we create is something that I want every LGBTQ plus person to experience. Um, you know, it's, it's so much more than backpacking. It's so much more than canoe camping or whitewater rafting or skiing or the, the actual activities that we're doing. Um, and it's so much more about, you know, not needing to explain to people why, you're a trans man that had a baby, right? Or stuff like that. Like you don't have to explain yourself in the same way. And it's incredibly freeing, I think. Oh, yeah. I I feel like that everybody kind of needs to pay more attention to that because once you see people coming together and feeling so free in those spaces, Mm -hmm. it it would almost help, you know, people like me, you know, realize that there's so much more out there. You know, I Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like it helps us to connect with one another when we see people, being their true true selves and that's not always accessible for for queer and trans people unfortunately Mm -hmm. so uh well so do you have like a favorite trip that you want to tell us about Mm. well I so uh, like I said I'm very like gardening based yeah (laughs) so a lot of my backpacking experience actually has been with TVOP a lot of that more Mm -hmm. um a lot of the events that like require more expensive equipment and stuff I've had the privilege of doing through TVOP um one that was so fun that I did was um called squats and summits which we're looking to hold something similar next year for our uh local queer and trans people (laughs) um it's basically we we team up with a local CrossFit gym in the area um that is also queer owned and operated um and we do some training beforehand because i know that there's a lot of um there's a lot of fear for people about backpacking and like not being quote unquote strong enough or fit enough to do it um so the squats and summits lends itself to those fears um by equipping people with um how to carry a bag and how to put it on and then like doing all of the workouts and mechanics of hiking. Yeah. And then we get out and we do some incredible climbs. And this past year we had a huge variety of people and a huge variety of experiences go out on that trip. And it was so fun to see how it all came together and to hear about um, people's life experiences and just to see, like have that representation of successful, happy LGBTQ people, like, made such made such a difference for me yeah <laughs> and then sure for the other participants as well oh I love that well is there anything <laughs> that we haven't really like touched on that you're passionate about that you want to kind of share with the audience what I can say is that we're kind of constantly looking to develop TVOP in new ways. There's not like a rigid path that we want TVOP to follow. Mm. We're very open to new partnerships and new opportunities and new events to lead. I mean, this past year, canoe camping and whitewater rafting was brand new for us and it was hugely successful. Um, And so we're really interested in trying a, a ton of other things like, like, queer and trans dog sledding like why not you know <laughs> yeah. like like it's the the air of excitement and curiosity that the tvop team and the tvop instructors brings yeah um it's just like so enlivening and uh I would, I would say for folks who are like maybe curious about TVOP, but aren't really sure like if backpacking is their thing or canoe camping is their thing, I would say like, just keep an eye on us because I have no, no idea what direction we're going. (laughs) And, um, who knows, maybe in the next year or two, we'll have a a trip or event that like is right up your alley. So yeah. Do y'all have, um, upcoming trips that people could get connected with? I know it's hitting winter, but, um, is there anything that's coming up that people could either get connected with or plan for in the future? Yeah, sure. So we do, we have two general trip releases, a summer and a winter trip release. Um, our winter trip release is right around the corner, uh, in the next week or two. Um, I will say, you know, we've got some really fun stuff happening in Colorado for some backcountry skiing. We've, and then, um, we've got some, a bunch of stuff in Vermont actually planned here in our local New England from snowshoeing to Nordic skiing to beginner intermediate ski weekends. Um, we've got a bunch of stuff in the works, um, and things are kind of always popping up new, right. For us. So who knows, maybe in a month we'll have another, something else come up. Um, 
as for our summer trips, those we're looking at those, that's more like a, our robust season right now. Um, it's our fullest season uh, and we're looking to release those in like early 2022. Nice. So people can yeah. stay up to date with those on the website or social yeah, media. What's yeah. the best way to connect with the venture out project? I would say, so we post everything on our website. Um, but if you, you know, our trips tend to fill up kind of fast. So if you're, if you're looking to schedule something for yourself, I would, um, keep an eye on our social media. Our Instagram is the event at the venture out project. Um, same with Facebook. Um, or you can sign up for our newsletter right on our website and, and we'll be sending out links and everything as soon as those trips are made available. Nice. Awesome. Well, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate this. This interview is a long time coming. So <laughs> yes, thank you so much for your patience over the busy, busy, Busy summer season. I know. Well, I'm glad that it went so well. And thank you so much for joining me. Um, hope you have a good rest of your day. Thank you. You too. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Hometown Earth as much as I did. Let us know by rating and subscribing so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every week on Tuesday. Head to the show notes linked in the episode description for more details. And let us know in the comments what you want to hear next. You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Believe.com and at Believe Podcasts. And you can find more about the podcast on Instagram at Hometown Earth or connect with me personally at Lena Saintford. We all know change needs to happen. So let's get started right here at Hometown Earth.